la ratalos ega kuti anoba merodia le tuze thank you jesus blessed be your name in jesus precious name we have given thanks would you also lift up your two hands and ask jesus speak to me today and let the impartation of enough is enough change my story forever speak to me today and let the revelation of enough is enough change my story forever speak to me today and let the revelation of enough is enough change my story forever By the light of your word, bring an end to every long-term struggle of my life. If you like, mention that to God. Mention that issue to God. Enough is enough is the feast of today. Enough is enough is the prepared feast of today. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Lord Jesus, let each one return with undeniable visitation today. Amen. Let the visitation by your word change everyone's situation supernaturally. Amen. Thank you, Father. Every everlasting mountain in the life of every worshiper today shall be scattered. Yeah. Every perpetual hill before anyone shall bow low. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please, you may be comfortably seated. Amen. Now, say with me before we start, God does not reward position. He rewards contribution. God does not reward status. He rewards service. God does not reward age. He rewards input. I like these words because I just heard it while I was coming up here to rule your life. God does not owe you anything. Amen? But you owe him obedience for your desired change of position. Okay, build your faith. If you want to live a victorious life, if you don't build your faith, you cannot live a victorious life. It's, it's all about responsibility. You don't take it, you live and die a liability. You don't take it. Okay, I'm, I'm around walking in your midst for 40 days and you are not watching, neither do you even believe it. How will he visit you? He visited me diversely. Eternal changes. God does not owe me anything. Come and say with me. God does not owe me anything. If you like, sit down and be complaining forever. It doesn't change God. I am that I am. God, you are stupid. I am. God, you are crazy. I am. God, you are not God. I am. There is nothing you complain about God that affects him. Amen. Amen. Build your faith. Build your faith. Don't build your faith. 
Carry on with your frustrations. <laughs> I don't know why things are not working for me. Are you working for him? Because I know, we know that all things work together for God. How many things? All, all things. things. Man. To them that love God, how much do you love him? Where is the proof of your love? There is nothing we are told to do that is to God's benefit. Every instruction of scriptures is to your benefit. Am I even interested in teaching anymore? Maybe to keep sharing experience with you. This God is true. He's who he says he is. He means everything he says. And he says only what he means. There is no accusation against God that will change your position. So stop, stop taking God to court. There is no accusation against God from you that will change your position. Just reposition yourself in the world. And let me see any devil that can disturb your change of position. Don't say that I'm a pastor. Pastor, what? It doesn't change your story. There are many founders in town who truly met God and God gave them the mandate. But nothing is working. Because there is no substitute for obedience. Vision is not a substitute. You can have a 36 hour vision. I think I had 18. You can have 36. It won't change your position. If you don't run, no vision will deliver. Let him run. Let him keep telling the story. I saw a vision 1921. I saw another one 1948. It won't change any. Look, I love you so much. I want your life to be better than mine. Amen. And God knows. But if you don't change your position, all you are doing is ceremony and politic in church. But your position must change now. As you reposition yourself in obedience to the word of God. He's no respecter of persons. He's no respecter of persons. I've been in this church 50 years. Good luck. Where is the proof of the commission in your life? It's not where you have been. Now I've been against kid since 1976. The proofs are here. Faith is working like fire in my brain. I've been co plus kid since 77. Prosperity grace is evident in every step of my life. No, no, you, you have been here with me. I wasn't sitting down with them, but I was lying at their feet. Start blowing grammar until you obey God, nothing will change. Start blowing grammar. Start celebrating your status. I'm a pastor. I've been a founder. Okay, don't change nothing. Don't change nothing. There are co-founders with me by grace. I mean, who found God gave them ministry? Fear the ministry. never eligible for promotion when you are no longer in service. You are, not. you are not. You are not. No matter how brilliant a soldier you are, when you retire, that's the end of it. That's the end of it. But I pray to God that today, something will turn. Because you are long overdue for a change of position. You are long overdue for a change of position. You, your family, your business, your career, your spiritual life is long overdue for a change of position. Amen. You have it. We can't that's why I close now because you have all the teachings. There's nothing to bother about. But if you won't obey God, sir, nothing will change. <laughs> if you won't obey God, nothing will change. If you won't obey God, nothing will change. I know this God a bit. I don't know too much of him, but I know him a bit. Nothing commits God to anybody like the individual's obedience. Nothing. He said, now I know that you fear me. 
because you have done this thing, you have obeyed my voice. I swear in blessing. When your obedience gets to a point, God starts wearing blessings on your life. Let obedience become your lifestyle. And you soon come under a swarm blessing. Swarm blessing means irreversible blessing. What do I call it? Irreversible. Man, Israel, Israel will ever be on top, no matter the anger of the nations. It's a swarm blessing. The blessing upon Israel is a swarm blessing. And that's the kind I'm believing God for you. Amen. Now, sir, I carry a swarm blessing in my life. I mean, I, I, and I've told you that before. Yes, sir. I carry a swarm blessing. If you meet a man with a swarm blessing, leave him alone. Yes, you touch him, God will explode. Yes, he will level you out. You must walk at getting to the point of a swarm blessing. Stop being religious, be real. Stop being religious, be real. Stop being religious, be real. I don't believe you. If things are not changing for you, I don't believe. Because I will believe God and you. <laughs> I will believe God more than I believe you. My son, yes, yes. if what he says will change is not changing, you should check yourself yes, whether you are standing right or not. Yes, I mean, you, you can't go out to witness, but can't you step in to pray? You are neither praying nor going out. Your mm. heart is not there. Mm, mm, mm. Your heart is not there. Some are praying heavy and they are going tough. Why would you be the same? You can't be the same. I love you. I love you. Your success in life is my success. Your breakthrough is my breakthrough. So when I see you at the same spot, I get butter. Are we not serving the same God? Don't we have the same Father? The difference is obedience. One is calling him. Papa, enough, pray for us. No prayer can be a substitute for obedience. You, prayer can't break scriptures. Thou shalt serve the Lord and they shall bless. So blessing those who are not serving is wasting your mouth. It won't change God's word. At the end of it, only God answers prayers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you can't break the scripture and expect it to respond. Yes, Something must change. Amen. No, because the month is ending. The liberation mandate has never allowed proofs from now. It won't allow proofs in your life. Amen. It won't lack proofs in your life. Amen. What God does is to take over the battles of the obedient. What does he do? He takes over the battles of the obedient. What God does, and God must take over your battle today. Amen. You have been struggling with issues for long. Today, your chain must land. Yeah. This day, your long-awaited change is landing. Yeah. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Understanding the unlimited power of faith. What is faith? We've been trying to examine this over a long time. Faith can be defined as an asset of inestimable value because it is worth anything that one can ever desire in life. It is worth anything that one can ever desire in life. That's why it's an asset of inestimable value. And it is wisdom to invest maximally in ensuring that our faith is kept alive and growing. Because then it puts you and I in command of all the issues of life. How many of them? All. For if thou canst believe, my son, all things, all things, all things, all things are possible to him that believeth. Mm. All 
things. That's what makes faith an asset of inestimable value. Because it is the gateway to all things that you and I can ever desire. Don't mistake being in a faith-based church as having faith. You build up your own faith upon your most holy faith, paying the price. I mean, uh, uh, all those sublime apostles were with Jesus. Some of them never uttered one word that Jesus left. They were lost. We can't find where they were. Don't ever mistake being in a church-based church as having faith. It provides opportunity for you and I to build our faith. But your faith won't build itself. Your faith will not build itself. Your faith will not build itself. My faith will not build itself. Just like your muscles can't build itself. You can't keep eating the kind of thing you eat now and build muscles. And without doing any exercise, you just wear a coat. No. It won't. Your muscles won't suddenly develop when you wake up in the morning. And then start saying, okay, come now, come now, come now. now. You, you take time to build your muscles. In the same way, it takes time to build your faith. It takes time time to build your faith. God told the man of God, Kenneth Copeland, go back to all the teachings of Agnes since 1962. Man, I never just go about it, I just talking, child. I believe I receive. Okay, where did you receive? <laughs> One of my sons, the other has an eruptive ministry, great ministry in Nigeria. The Lord told them, go back to where your father began. So he went to Kaduna and collected all the tapes of 1982, 83, 84, 85. In case I don't understand what he's saying now, let me hear where he began from. Great name. Blessing the nations of the world. Your muscle won't develop itself. Your title won't develop your muscle. Your calling won't develop your muscle. Your 36 hour vision won't develop your muscle. It has to be consciously developed because there is nothing of value that is not at a cost. In fact, value is a function of cost. You, you can buy, from our workshop here, you can buy a car of 50 naira. I mean, 50,000. 50, uh, uh, 50, I mean, but it won't move. You have to carry that car. <laughs> but when you say, what did you buy? What do you call it? A car. It's a car. Not a mantle. <laughs> it's a car, but the car can't move because of the cost of it. Somebody else has a car that you can start warming it when you're in the bedroom. You just press two, three numbers, and the car is warming itself. Amen? But that's not 50,000. <laughs> that's not what? If I'm still reading, and still listening, and still taking notes, don't deceive yourself. Your faith won't build itself. Come on. Write it down, my faith won't be myself. My faith won't build itself. Won't build itself. My faith won't build itself. My faith won't build itself. Write it down. <laughs> so that you can even go with that and go home. Your faith won't build itself. My faith won't build itself. My muscles won't develop by surprise. I just wake up in the morning and, and I come to church and my two arms cannot clamp. My muscle just grew as I slept. I said, man and brethren, listen to me. My muscle just grew overnight. By the time I got up, I just saw that my muscle is now heavyweight muscle. Okay, don't go to the rings. You will know that what you have is a swelling. <laughs> Not a developed muscle. <laughs> Faith is an asset of inestimable value. Because it has a 
power to deliver all you can ever desire. What is faith? Faith is that force that invades the invisible world and delivers its mission with precision. Faith delivers its mission with precision as it invades the invisible world. <laughs> Glory to God. One of my younger ones had a challenge and I, I, I mean, uh, got trapped by the feet of insanity. And I got him and I said, put him in my car. Let me see the devil that has the power to enter my car with me. Can enter. Why? And that light shines in the darkness and darkness can contest it. Can contend with him. Darkness will never contend with light. That faith came alive in me. They put him in the car and that was the end of it. That was the end forever. December 25, 1983, the end for eternity. No tablet, no injection, no follow-up. Mm. It delivers its mission with precision. I enter them with the faith that the light that shines in darkness and darkness can't handle is at work in me. And as I stand inside the room where they put him, he stood up and greeted me. Do you know him? That's my brother. Darkness must reckon with light. Any day, any time. Faith is that force that invades the invisible war that is afflicting your life and delivers its mission with precision. Not okay, let's go. Father God, precision. Let me see the devil that can enter my car with me. And there was no prayer. There was no gyration. Faith, you can't beat it. Faith can never be beaten in battle. Above all, taking the sheet of faith and you quench what? Oh, oh the fiery that. Now, my question is, <laughs> it is... Every of our problem is a faith question. But believe me, I mean, I, every of our problem is a faith question. Every of our problem in life is a faith question. Every, every. Neos Karodabika Dota Pradia. They called me that they were going to have a procedure for my wife to have a child. And then I said, I'm coming. And then I said, Chai, turn. And I also turned. And labor ceased. I was told, I don't have to wait. I've already declared the word. I've said, Chai, turn. You, doctor, you turn away yourself. And labor ceased, and the baby turned and delivered naturally without any stress. The problems of our life is largely if not absolutely a faith question. Many are hearing me, but are they truly believing what God is saying? Okay, in case you don't want to hear me, can't you hear Jesus in his word? I don't believe this man. Okay, do you believe Jesus? You don't believe Jesus? What are you doing in this church? We are a Jesus-believing congregation. Hallelujah. And so what's your problem? Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said, even insanity bows to faith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What are you talking about? Insanity bows to faith. I've been face to face with death a few times, and death bowed to faith. Hallelujah. Even one died, the faith in me was. I'm in charge. Parurili Yalishia. It's not that I was praying. The thing is speaking inside me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to torment you, Satan. You know, you don't know who you're dealing with. People die only from inside. <laughs> People only die from inside. <laughs> and faith is of the heart. Until your faith dies, no devil can kill you. Until your faith dies, no devil. And I know a few of them. I'm in touch with them, they're in touch with me. No devil.
can kill you Amen. until your faith dies inside. Now we are moving because it can't be at the same level all over. It can't be primary three forever. We need to move forward. Now, the faith question is your real question and my real question. Something is turning. Because that long standing issue must bow today. Enough is enough. Just do what God says. Praise God. Praise God. This is faith. Now, what is faith? Faith is a display of confidence in God. Until when the desired result is obtained. Cast not therefore away your confidence. Because it has a great recompense of reward. Cast not away your confidence. It guarantees the end result. Abraham did not stagger the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded. Romans 4, 20 and 21, that what God has promised, he was also able to perform. Faith is a demonstration of confidence in God until when the desired result is obtained. What is faith? We've said it over and again. Faith is the master key to a world of unlimited possibilities. Unlimited possibilities. Unlim they say it's dead four days. They say, no, no, no. That's the specialization of faith. If you believe, you see the glory of God. He's been dead for four days. He's thinking, he says, shut up. That's what faith does. There is no irreversible case with faith. That seemingly irreversible situation shall be reversed today. Yeah. And you keep it reversed by keeping your faith alive and buoyant. Amen. If you let the battery of your torchlight go down, it will not show light again, will it? Okay. So faith is a spiritual battery. It must be kept charged or it will lose its potency. Your battery of faith must be kept charged. Not 23% charged, like your phone will tell you. I mean, high level charge. When your battery starts going down in your torchlight, the light starts going low. The intensity starts going down. It starts dimming, 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 and dead. Yes. <laughs> dimming. So it's not 1% charge. 1% charge can't carry your phone. Hello? Yes. It's just a network not available. Eh? Your butt is one percent charge, going, going, gone. I like you to see faith as your spiritual battery that must be kept on high charge at all time for high level illumination that keeps darkness off your shore. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we were in a place holding a meeting, and then they said the. Uh, foil in the janitor is about gone. I said, don't stop it. It can't stop. It can't stop while the maintain is on. We were there for hours. Until we stop. It didn't stop. When we stop the service, when it, when it, when it. <laughs> they said, the uh, foil in this guy is burning. I said, stop looking at the gauge. <coughs> Keep going. Stop looking at the gauge. It was in Houston, they said the, the flap of the fuel tank of the filling station of the aircraft. I said, Romans 8.28, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Now, fuel valve, fuel computer, open up. Now, my luggage is packed because I'm going. Yes. <laughs> I don't know mechanic. I don't know engineering. I don't know. I know this thing can change anything. Anything. We are not going to get 
on board a commercial flight. We're not going to shatter any plane. We won't waste God's money. And I didn't say that. I do another thing. As I said that word, I started facing my study to get ready for the meeting. Build your faith. The challenges of life have no timetable. The time to get ready is never there. You better live ready. The time to get ready. If you are a student, you have exam, they give you a timetable. Yes. It's 2 1. You know, it's 1 p.m. But this one is 3 4 10. Can come before he's 1 or 2. <laughs> it depends on where you find yourself. So it is better you live ready. Accident does not give announcement that I'm going to accident you today. <laughs> No, 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 no. You are just going on your own, naturally, on a wonderful natural day, and then accident say, look, I'm going to kill you. And I say, man, I'm ready long before you came. Shut up, you devil. Yes, sir. And then he cares you away. Is somebody here? Yes, sir. Is something entering to you? Yes, sir. Because I want you to know this is not fake. Don't think that faith is luck. Faith is a weapon. It's not an ideology. Faith is what? A weapon. Above all, taking the sheet of faith and you quench all the fiery darts of the devil. What you're having this morning is a faith charge, not a teaching. If you want to be charged, put your body on the line. This battle is getting low. Get, get it back. Get it back. Get it back. Now, what is unique about Bible faith? It's a mystery. Bible faith unleashes its power through the tongue. Through what? Through what? It unleashes its power through the tongue. If you will say to this mountain, be down this remove a cancer of the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that those things you say will come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you say. No matter how anointed a man, closed mouth equals a closed destiny. Faith can never deliver without engaging your tongue. Faith can never deliver without keeping your heart intact on the word of God. <laughs> Jesus came here, the living word himself. And when he would not open his mouth, he was afflicted, he was oppressed. Isaiah 53 and verse 7. He said he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet what? He opened not his mouth. Now, he's brought into judgment. He's brought into judgment because he will not open his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. He will not open his mouth. You stand to remain oppressed and afflicted without an open mouth. What you believe in your heart will only deliver through your mouth. You can't say it, you can't have it. There are many people in this church who cannot say up to now, after all their years here, I cannot be sick. They can't say it. They can't say no to any medical verdict. They just admit it. They accept it hook, liar, and sinker. You say, I'm about to die. Okay, when am I supposed to die? <laughs> he said, between seven and eight weeks, you are dead. Okay, what can I do? There is nothing. <laughs> you start crying. They say, where? I say, I'm dead. <laughs> they say, where? <laughs> I mean, you can't say it, you can't have it. Many people thought I was arrogant, yes, spiritually arrogant, against the devil and his forces. You can't say it boldly. God can confirm it openly. Mm. Oh, this God, I cannot be saying, I cannot be saying. <laughs> it won't work. You 
say it boldly for God to confirm it openly. You are not the one saying so. He said he took your infirmity. You are only affirming and reaffirming what he already did. It's not pride. It's faith in action. What is it? Faith in action. Okay, your blood pressure is high, not mine. Now, I believe it too, but I have to declare that it too. God cannot confirm what we will not declare. God cannot confirm what we will not declare. He won't confirm what we declare openly and start doubting secretly. I say, God, uh, my wife, he took my infirmity, but <laughs> the way things are, the infirmity is coming back. <laughs> hey, man. Now, hey, hear me. I would rather die believing God than doubt him. That's, I've gotten to that point by his grace. <laughs> Amen. Uh, uh, death knows he can't kill me. Because you keep my faith, you can't kill me. And my faith is where you cannot reach. My faith is inside me. Amen. There's no arm robber who can steal your lung. <laughs> Amen. No, 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 you can't. It's inside you. This is so important. Please understand. Look, if faith is fake, Canaan land is fake. Mm. Now, is this building fake or real? It's real. It's real. It's real. Now, now, listen to me. Canaan land has not been out of power supply since 1999. Since what? 1999. Faith is not fake. Faith is real. We are not indebted to any man living or dead. Is that fake? Otherwise, they'll come and say, you are winners. Faith is not fake. Faith is real. Somebody's story is changing. I said, your story is changing. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. That is one unique thing about Bible faith. We mustn't miss it for any reason. Faith also, now listen, when Jesus opened his mouth, John 18, four to six, whom seek ye? They said, Jesus. They said, I am he, and they fell backward. I am he, and they fell backward, they fell. When he opened his mouth, the oppressor could, couldn't stand him. This oppression on your life is enough. Yeah. Open your mouth against it. We were going from uh, our office in Garden of Faith in those days, going to the Warby Hall, and I began to open fire. And my son walking with me said, hello, what's happening? I said, I was just dealing with some foul forces in the atmosphere. Amen. Open your mouth. Somebody came to me and said he was hearing noise in his house. 1983. I said, because you are too quiet. <laughs> and nature had bust vacuum. Somebody must be speaking somewhere. <laughs> Since we are not speaking, the devils came in there to start speaking. I said, get out from here. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't roar as a lion, you are a puppet. <laughs> you are a puppy, like the dogs of my grandchildren. They've been playing with you. You hey! say what? You hear me say, any devil that flies across Canada won't fly again. Yes, they say, hey, hey. he has started. <laughs> I say, anyone that came across to the gate and took any car from anybody in 24 hours, I declare you dead. Yes, they were dead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dead. Fresh dead. <laughs> Fresh dead. You open your mouth or you lose the battle. You either open your mouth or you lose the battle. You can never win the war with a closed mouth. You can never win the war with a closed mouth. He said, open your mouth wide, I'll feel it. But if you want to happen to me, go ahead, you suffer the loss. Open your mouth wide. If you have opened to me, I will have turned my hand against your enemy. I will have torn my hand against your enemy and bring them down. 
subdued your enemies. God can't move without your tongue. He's only committed to confirming what you declare. What you don't declare, God cannot confirm. Now, enough is enough. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2. One of the blessedness of a revival like we're having now is to terminate your long-standing problems. Revive thy work, O God, in the midst of the year. Make known thy power and in wrath remember mercy. And what will he do, among other things? Verse 6, he said, He will scatter every everlasting mountain and every perpetual hill he will bring down. His ways are everlasting. That's what he does in a revival. He brings down your, he scatters your everlasting mountains. Enough is enough. He brings down the perpetual, he is staring you in the face, saying, enough is enough. That is one of the blessedness of engaging with a reviver. It secures a divine verdict. Enough it's is enough. enough. Thank you, Jesus. Every change of story testimony we are hearing, they are all enough is enough dimensions of testimony. You are getting your own this morning. Amen. Enough is enough dimension of the testimony you are getting your own this morning. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now we understand that every situation of long continuance is a cause. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 59. Every affliction of long continuance is a cause. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful in the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues and of long continuance and sore sicknesses and of long continuance. Every issue of long continuance is a curse. But as a spiritual Jew, hmm, there is no enchantment against Jacob, nor divination against Israel. So every cross ravaging anyone's life today returns back to sender. Every cross devastating your business and career, your marital life, your children's life, anything that the enemy has shot against you as an arrow of evil returns back to sender today. Because Christ has redeemed us from the causes of life. The cause of the law are the causes of life. He has redeemed us from all the causes of life. Be made a cause for us, for it is written, cause is every man that hangeth upon the tree. That the blessing may overthrow the causes. Amen. Amen. For how shall I cause whom God has not caused? And how shall I defy whom the Lord has not defied? Numbers 23, verse 8 and verse 20. Verse 8 and verse 20. How shall I cast whom God has not cast? And how shall I defy whom the Lord has not defied? Verse 20 of it. Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Redemption has repositioned you for irreversible blessing. Eternal victory over the causes of life. Eternal victory. Therefore, as a prophet, I declare today that every cause placed on anyone's life by any agent of the devil or the devil himself be averted in the name of Jesus. For by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of the course of life. And by a prophet was his life or her life you know, preserved. God sent me the same way he sent Moses. Yes, yes, yes. Now in the name of Jesus the Christ, every cause that has plagued your life in that toe, in one area or another, is declared averted. Yeah. 
The Bible defines our new position in redemption. He said, after you have suffered a while, so you are not permitted to suffer beyond the while. Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and set to you. You are long overdue for settlement. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you are declared settled today. You are not permitted to suffer beyond a while. Beyond a why. That thing has gone beyond a why. Hey, it has expired today. Today is the expiry date of that flick. That is said for our light affliction. Second Corinthians 4 17, which is bought for what? For what? Come and say with me, enough is enough. Look at that issue with anger and say to that situation, enough is enough. I'm not permitted to be afflicted beyond a moment. Enough is enough. Say it in the anger of the Holy Ghost. Harass that devil with your prophetic statement. Enough is enough. This harassment is expired today. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Is enough. enough, is enough. The siege against my life is over today. Enough is enough. Come on, pray. Pray. Take it. Take it by force. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Jesus, precious name we are praying. He said, weeping may endure for what? How many nights? Come on now, how many nights? Psalm 30 and verse 5, for his anger endured but for a moment. In his favor, his life. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. Whatever's gone beyond a night in your life, enough is enough. You have wept one night. You are not permitted to weep for two nights. <laughs> Weeping is permitted only to endure for a night. In the morning, joy must replace it. What well, this hour is declared your morning hour. This hour is declared your morning hour. This hour is declared your morning hour. Your weeping is over. Your tears are over. Your testimonies are now here. Your testimonies are now here. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Glory to God. Amen. Lift up your right hand and give God thanks for the blessing. Enough is enough. Your story has changed. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. It is faith that turns our situations into testimonies. Watch. 
this new week shall be a week of testimonies for you. It will be clear that God has taken over your battle. Affliction shall not rise again a second time. That siege of barrenness, siege of miscarriage is over today. That marital spell is broken today. That business spell and career spell is broken today. With your faith on its feet, these verdicts have delivered already in your life. Amen. Give the Lord the big hand of praise, everybody. Praise God. Amen. Get seated, please. There was a time I bought books worth $9,600 at a time to build my faith. At that time, 2,500 will buy you a car in this country that will be comfortable enough for you to go to anywhere you're going. Invest in building your faith. That's where your future lies. Your faith is the custodian of your future. You don't have a future without faith. When your faith fails, it's like heart failure. Don't watch your faith fail. Keep your faith alive. Now, you are here in this morning, in this service, and you're not born again yet. That is the beginning of living an overcomer's life. Until a man is born again, he is not listed as an overcomer. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is that overcomes the world, even our faith. First John 5, 4. Wherever you are, you want to surrender your life to Christ, please stand to your feet quickly. We are out of time. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. God bless you. You want to surrender your life to Christ today, please stand to your feet. That struggle is enough. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. I will pray with you right now where you are. Stand to your feet. Everyone that wants to render his own life to Christ, please stand to your feet. I'm praying for you right there where you are. Stand to your feet. God bless you. Somebody else need to get up. Get up quickly. Get up quickly. Get up quickly. Fire is burning on the mountain. Secure your life. Remain standing, please. Remain standing. Everyone standing. Remain standing. Remain standing. Remain standing. Move to the nearest aisle to where you are. Some church officials are there to assist you fill out your card in one minute. Now, secondly, move to the nearest aisle to where you are. There are people who need to rededicate their life to Christ today. I want to pray with you at the same time. You've been one leg in and one leg out for some time. You want to be established in Christ. You want to be back home and stay home. Please stand to your feet. I want to pray with you. Everyone that wants to rededicate this or our life to Christ, please stand. You want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand. Amen. Also, move to the nearest aisle to where you are standing. And then some church officials are there. Somebody else needs to get up. Get up quickly now. Get up quickly now. Join us. I'm going to pray right now. And I'm praying for them where they are. Please get up quickly. Get up quickly. Get up quickly. And move to the nearest eye. Move now. Move. Move now, please. Move to the nearest eye to where you are. Move. Please move. Please ask him to move. Move to where you are, please. Some officials. The prayer I pray for you today will show, we begin to show from this moment. Yeah. Your taste for sin will die. Yeah. Your appetite for God will come alive. Yeah. I'm releasing you from here as a child of light. Yeah. Darkness will start giving way to you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Please bow your heads for now. Lift up your right hand to heaven. As I lead you in this prayer of faith, say with me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud, Lord Jesus. I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I might be justified. Right now, I believe that my sins are forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. And I accept you today as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe my sins are gone. I'm not a child of God. 
I'm born again. I'm restored. My story has changed. I'm now a new creature. All things have passed away in my life and all things have become new. Thank you, Jesus, for receiving me. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me. And thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Father, I pray over these precious people. Your grace has brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. Be covered by the blood in the many days of your life. You will run this race to the end. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Congratulations. Please complete your cards and pass them on to the church officials that are standing with you. Shall we all rise to our feet? Amen. Operation Run is your opportunity to emerge a prize winner in the race of life. Come and say, it's my opportunity. Say with me, Operation Run is my opportunity to emerge a prize winner in the race of life. Operation Run is my opportunity to emerge a star in the race of life. So help me, Jesus. So help me, Jesus. Now, let me tell you this. Everyone truly serving God is not permitted to be held hostage by the devil. He said, Israel is my son. Let my son go and he may serve me. If you don't let him go, I will kill your son because my son must go to serve me. My son must go. He said, go serve the Lord as you have said. Go serve the Lord. When you are out to serve the Lord, you become like a coal of fire in the hand of your enemy. Everybody truly serving God cannot be held hostage by the devil. Oh, yes. Everybody truly let my son go that he may serve me. Let my son go is out to serve me. Let my son go enough is enough. Let my son go he must be set free. Let my son go. You don't let him go I kill you. I must free my son. Now listen to me. The moment you remain in the covenant of service, you cannot be held hostage by the devil. Amen. Come on, let me hear your loud and say, Amen. A family had a long standing pregnancy. They got into so many and pursuit of God, delivered a passing baby boy. One Sunday like this came, he said, No, enough is enough. The following Monday, the baby came. You can't be held hostage serving God in truth and in deed. Therefore, nobody in this church shall remain under the clutches of the wicked this time. Before June 28, 25, your case is settled forever. Give God the best of you this time. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I went out with my team yesterday. We returned with 568 souls. 568 souls to Jesus. And I can tell you this. I, I, I'm excited. God never lies. We made calls to 2,863 of our converts. 1,524 are already established in church. Dumb believers foundation class. Some of them have done Bible school. Some of them are in service groups. I can tell you this thing works. This, somebody said I met him on the field the same week. God changed his story. He now runs a, 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 a transportation bus that he used to bring people to church today. Same day I met him. God has met you today. Your story must change. Yeah. Get into it. This thing works like fire. Yes, Come and say, I'm not permitted to be head hosting. I'm, I'm not permitted to be head hosting. As long as I'm serving God. As long as I'm serving God. In truth. In truth. And indeed. Lift up your two hands. Now, receive this prophetic blessing. When Moses said, let my people go, no, no God of Egypt could hold them down. 
Now I say to you, all forces of hell, let my people to whom I am sent, the winner's family, everyone you've been holding hostage, now let them go in the name of Jesus. The siege over your life is over this morning. The siege over your destiny is over this morning. The siege over your spiritual life is over this morning. The siege over your family is over this morning. is enough to the siege of barrenness. Enough is enough to miscarriage. Enough is enough to failure and stagnation. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lift up your two hands and celebrate God as we close in this service. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, before we share the goodness, let me once again introduce you to these faith books, Understanding the Unlimited Power of Faith, Exploits of Faith, Born to Win, and the letters in our library, Understanding the Power of Faith. Make sure you commit yourself to building your faith. You will ever be grateful you did. Now, shall we together share the goodness of the Lord? God's goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in praise of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace. My case is different. Congratulations. Congratulations. Let's move right now and let the next service come in.